What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week, you don't wanna miss them. In this video today, I'm going to talk about which is the best path to take, MD versus DO. For those who are unaware what a DO is versus an MD, a, D, a MD is a doctor of medicine, whereas a DO is a doctor of osteopathic medicine. And many students have a hard time telling the difference between the two and when should I apply to a DO school versus when should I, should I apply to a MD school. And this video today, I'm gonna to break all that down to you. All right, so there's a article that just came out in the Forbes uh, website that talked about the difference between MD and uh, DOs. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, in terms of how many schools there are, there are about 35-ish, maybe a little bit more now, uh, DO schools versus over 100 or so, almost 200 MD schools. The training that you go to, through is essentially the same. You do your first two years of medical school, which are in the classroom, and then your third and fourth years are in your clinical rotations and doing like surgery, internal medicine, pediatrics, nephrology, and all of your different uh, rotations. So a DO doctor is essentially the same kind of training, gets the same training as a MD. The problem lies in that the fact that when you go to a DO school, um, you have to take the MD boards in addition to your DO boards, it's called the Comlex, in addition to your USMLE uh, boards if you want to apply to a MD residency. And some residencies do not even take or accept DO applicants, such as my residency. We don't take DO students. So that makes it a little bit more challenging uh, when you are a DO student and you're applying to residency to a MD residency. It makes it challenging to get into, especially the competitive ones like plastic surgery, um, neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery. But that is not to say that there are not doctors out there that are, you know, neurosurgeons who are who, who are a DO or a orthopedic surgeons who are DO because I, I know quite a few. I actually know a spine surgeon here in San Antonio who's a DO. So, um, but if you are trying to decide and if you're in high school, which path to take, well, there's great news because there are several schools that I'm gonna talk about, a few of them that offer a direct uh, medical program. So you get your BS, your bachelor's degree, as well as you get your DO. So that's one of the reasons why, or if I would consider a DO school. Um, so I'm gonna go through uh, some of those programs. The, the, number, the first one is Nova Southeastern University. This is a school, it's a seven year program. It requires a 3.5 GPA in high school, a 30 minimum composite score on the ACT, or a 1360 on the SAT, and then you have to complete four years in math, science, and English. So the next school is the Massachusetts School of Pharmacy and Health Science. This is a seven year program also. It requires courses in high school algebra one and two, geometry, biology, chemistry, four years of English, one year of history. You have to write a letter of recommendation. You have to get a letter of recommendation as well as write a personal statement. The next one is Pitzer uh, College. This is a seven year program also. Uh, you take highly challenging course loads in high school and then you demonstrate how you have contributed to the community. Uh, you, you complete the common application and you write a little essay. You have to submit your ACT as well as your ACT scores or your um, ACT scores and then there's a day-long interview for this program here. And the last one that's out there is the New York Institute of Technology. This is another seven-year program. You have to have a combined uh, minimum score or your SAT of 1270 
or an ACT score of 28, you have to have a two letters recommendation and write a 300 to um, 350 word essay. So these are a few schools that you can look into if you are considering DO versus MD. And for everyone else out there, uh, if you already passed high school and maybe already have your, your undergraduate degree, a lot of people choose to apply to DO schools because they're traditionally they're easier to get into. So students who have lower MCAT scores or lower GPAs, you apply to a DO school and then you're more likely to get accepted. But like I said, the training is the same. I work alongside some DO uh, doctors and I you really can't tell the difference uh, but in your training in medical school and your DO school you do get hands-on kind of training it's called manipulative uh, kind of um, medicine it's called OMM I believe what this allows you to do is take alternative approaches to treating a patient and use type of uh, certain maneuvers to try to heal a patient versus relying on medications so a little bit different approach, more of a holistic approach, which you focus on disease pre prevention as well. And most of the students who go to a DO school will tell you that they want you to go into primary care, whether that's pediatrics, internal medicine, family medicine, OBGYN. If you go to a DO school, they will harp and focus and try to get you to go into primary care. So whether you're in high school, and then you can do the BS to DO kind of combined programs. And there are several of them out there, like I said before, and that will save you a year of medical school. I think that's an excellent idea or choice. Number two is if you're done with your undergrad, your college, you're having a hard time getting into an MD school, you know, you've been rejected a few times, and then you want to apply to a DO school, I think that's a good option if you, you know, your GPA and your MCAT score are low. That's a, another option for you to apply to. But just know, looking long term, you will you may have a harder chance getting into a residency program, especially an MD, because there are fewer slots, as well as you will have a harder chance to get into the competitive specialties, like we talked about plastic surgery, dermatology, uh, neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery. And also looking long, uh, more long term, um, you will, you may come up from a, come a, a upon a lot of times where you have to explain what your initials are behind your name. I've heard it over and over again where, you know, a doctor is seeing a patient in the hospital and the patient's walking by in clinic and they say, what's a DO? I never heard of it before. I've actually, the other day, I heard two or two or three people at the front desk, the medical clerks, the medical assistants, and they were trying to figure out like what a DO is. So you will possibly come across that where people are just not sure what a DO is. Um, so there, those are the times where I think, you know, it's good to maybe look into a DO program. But uh, my first choice would be an MD. If I can't get into a MD program, um, I would try to reapply. If I didn't get in a second time or third time, I would start to look at some DO programs versus some, some Caribbean schools. But um, those are kind of my thoughts on MD versus uh, DO. Uh, like I said, there are not a lot of DO schools out there, so uh, the amount of students that they take are not as much as a MD uh, program, but it is an option to uh, look into if you're having a hard time getting into an MD. Like I said, both are well-trained doctors. You can get into a specialty of your choice, although it may be harder with a, a DO behind your name, but it is possible. Um, and then it just depends on what type of approach you want to take with your patients, whether you want to take an allopathic approach, which, treat, which means treating patients and illnesses and diseases through traditional science-based means, opposed to homeopathic, which is kind of more alternative medicine. This is Dr. Webb. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.